The Free Paradise Box project from Vectric is a great project as it is, and I'm sure many of you have already made it. But what if you wanted to make it truly your own? Well, let me show you how. Vectric has all kinds of really great free projects, one every month actually. And I know a lot of you have probably already made them, and made them for friends, family, or maybe even for yourself. But what if you wanted to take that old design and breathe new life into it? Maybe using some of the models from Design and Make. Well, let me take you through, in just in the software, we're not actually gonna make a physical piece, but just in the software, how you can go ahead and modify the original files that you get free from Vectric, and add a little something, a little something to make it truly your own or maybe really special for that special somebody. If you don't already have the Paradise Box files downloaded, head over to Vectrix.com and go to their free projects. You'll see there's quite a list of free projects and some of these even work in the free trial versions of vCarve Desktop, Pro, or Aspire. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you're going to find the Paradise Box and you'll see it's one of those free projects that's usable in the trial versions. Let's download those files, unzip them onto your desktop, and let's get started. Okay, let's have a look at the files that you're going to get with this free project. If we open up the project folder, you're going to find some nice images of the finished Paradise Box, and then also the top, bottom, and side, and back of the Paradise Box. Now the only files we're actually going to modify are the front, back, and top. The other ones will stay exactly the same. The last part we're going to need is a file to add to the top of the box. So let's head over to designandmake.com and to the store and let's search for anything to do with love. And there's all kinds of great models here to choose from, but the one that kind of hit home for me was the Tree of Love. Let's take a look at that. And I think this is going to make a perfect addition to the top of the Paradise box, especially if we use the B style, which is in a dish. So we're going to machine this just below the surface of the top of the box. I've chosen to unzip the Paradise Box tutorial files right onto my desktop so it's easy to find. Let's have a quick look at those just before we go ahead and start making any edits. Let's double click on that, open up the tutorial files, and you'll see that there's three beautiful images of the Paradise Box as it was meant to originally be made. We have the, um, the Paradise Box tutorial PDF, which is the instructions to use all these files to make one of these boxes again as it was originally meant to be. I would suggest highly that you go ahead and take a look at that if you've never made one before, just to make sure you understand all the intricacies of running the toolpaths and, ha and how Michael Taylor originally wanted you to make these. Now we also have the five um, CRV files that'll work in vCarve Desktop, Pro, and Aspire, and we're going to go ahead and modify only three of these. The bottom and the side we're going to leave exactly as they are. They don't need to be changed. The back and the front, what we're going to do is we're just not going to do the V-carving on the front and that, front and back, so we're going to end up leaving out the uh, the nice sort of filigree work here. And then on the top, we're going to remove that V-carving again, and we're just going to put on the, um, the recessed tree of love. So let's just go ahead and minimize that, and let's bring up V-carve desktop. It's important to remember that the tools that I'm going to use in vCarve Desktop are available in Pro and Aspire both, so you can use whichever software you'd like to. Let's just go ahead and open up an existing file, and we're going to start off with the back. Open that. And right off the bat, we're going to save this off under a new name. So if we mess it up or we have any problems at all, we can go ahead and just always go back to the original ones. We're going to call it Tree of Love Box, and we are going to save that. Let's take a look at our tool paths. So having a look at both our tool paths and our vectors, you'll see that as we go ahead and select them, the vectors will light up that this tool path uses. So right now, this we're not going to use this one anymore, this tool path anymore, or this tool path anymore, but we do need these last two tool paths. So we have a couple choices. We can delete these, or when you go ahead and save off your tooling, just ignore them. F for this particular demo, we're going to go ahead and right-click, and we're going to delete them. 
just to make life easier so we don't get confused. And seeing as it's a brand new file, then really it doesn't matter. And we're not going to use these, so we're going to go ahead and delete these inner ones. But I'm going to leave the outside ones here. Because in the future, if I decide to put some v-carving on the front and the back of this box, let's say I've got a nice saying or I want to put a name or something like that on it or a date, then I might want to use reuse those again. But for now, we're just going to ignore them. So let's go ahead and have a look at what we're going to get when we run these two toolpaths. This is all we're going to get for the back of the box, which is exactly what we want. So let's just go ahead and, and you can save off those files and use them as you'd like. So let's close those down. Let's save that off. Let's go ahead now and open up our front. And again, like I said before, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go File, Save As, and we're going to save this off as Tree of Love Box. And it's going to be the front, so that looks great. Let's save that. Let's have a look at our tool paths again. And we need this one. We don't need this one, so we're going to right click on that and we're going to delete that one. And we're also going to delete the vectors that go with it. And we don't need this outline as well right now, so we're going to delete that. But we're going to leave the vectors there again. This is the front of the box, so maybe you might want to put some v-carving on there in the future and go right ahead. Let's just preview those and see what we get. It's exactly what I was hoping for. Let's close that off. So now you can save off those toolpaths. Just make sure you make any edits that you need to for your machine. And then we'll save that. Now the more tricky one is going to be the top. So let's just go ahead and open up the top of this. And let's have a look at our toolpaths again. And we're just going to make sure that we understand what we're getting into here. So we've got the, the front edge, which we need to keep. We've got the main decoration, which we're not going to keep. We've got the border, which you may or may not want to keep. Um, I'm going to not use it because uh, I don't want to have to do an extra tool change. But, but you might want to leave it in there and have a nice sort of sort of edge around it. It's totally up to you. And of course, there is the border profile. So we're going to go ahead and right click and delete the main decoration toolpath. And we're going to right click and we are going to go ahead and delete this one as well. And what I forgot to do is to actually go ahead and save this off under a new name. So let's go save as and we are going to put That's great. That's just in case anything goes terribly wrong, then we're great. So let's have a look and see what we have here. If we go ahead and preview these two tool paths, this is the top. So if we ran it just like it is, it would be a blank top, which maybe somebody might want it just to be a blank top, but we don't want that. We'd like to go ahead and add in a nice 3D model. So let's go over to our clip art tab. Now when I download single models from Design and Make, I make sure I put them in my default Vectric clip art library in my Design and Make folder under a directory called Single Models. So if I click that, then you'll see all kinds of different single models here that I have. And I'm going to go ahead and find my Tree of Love B style. Now you're going to have to go ahead and find that file wherever you saved it. It may be in your downloads folder. You might need to use your local files. Um, browser here to go ahead and find it in your downloads folder or wherever you happen to put it. You'll have to go find it. But right now I know where mine is so I'm going to go ahead and bring in that tree of love. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down my shift key and using the sizing handles I'm just going to size it up to fit inside of that the box. Again you may want to machine that or v-carve that, that rectangle in if you'd like. For me I'm not going to worry about that. I, I like it just the way it is. That's perfect. Let's take a look at our 3D view and you can see that it's just below the surface of our project. Now it looks good. Let's go back to our modeling tab. Now one of our best practices is that we should add in a zero plane before we start doing any tooling. That way our tool won't fall off the edge of our dish shape and we'll get a nice smooth edge to that which is exactly what we want. That's perfect. And now what we want to do is go back to our 2D view, select our tree of love, and we need to get a, a vector boundary. So just the circle, because all we want to do when we machine this 
um, or when we cut in the tree of love in the dish shape to the top of our wood, we only want to cut just that circle. We don't want to worry about wasting our time machining all this work out here, which is great. So we're going to use this vector to isolate our tooling. And then what we want to do is to check to make sure that the depth of this is going to be fine. Now, the original files are set up with 3 quarter inch wood. So let's just go ahead and see what the depth of that model is. The shape height of that is a, just under a quarter inch. So let's make it a, a cool quarter inch. And that'll make it nice and deep. Actually, maybe even a little bit deeper. Because we want it to be nice and bold. That looks great. So that means we're using 3.5 or 0.35 inches of our 0.75 inches for this. We're cutting into our into our board. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So let's just go ahead and quickly make up some quick tooling for this particular part of our project. So let's go to our let's tile this just to make life a little easier for us so we can see what we're doing. Let's grab this vector and let's go ahead to our roughing pass. So we're going to use uh, an end mill, a quarter inch end mill. I think it'll be fine. We're going to use our selected vector. Now we don't want any boundary offset. Let's go back to the selected vector just for a second. We want to make sure we do that because we really don't want to machine outside of your relief any. Um, for, for, for a couple reasons. One, the biggest one being you don't want to waste a lot of time machining your whole top surface of your board. And because this is just below the surface of your board, it's just going to be cutting air over here. So it's really not going to matter. So we're going to use this vector to isolate our tooling. We don't want any boundary offset because we don't want to go outside of that circle any. We want, just want to stay inside that circle. We're going to leave a little bit of a machining allowance behind. So this is a little bit of material left over top of our model so that when we come back with our finishing pass, we'll cut that extra material off. We're going to use a, um, a Z-level roughing, uh, no, sorry, a 3D raster. Z-level roughing would, would probably be faster, but in this case, we're going to do the 3D raster. Um, just to demonstrate that, and we're going to go ahead and calculate that. Let's preview that visible, let's reset our preview, and let's preview just this tooling, this roughing pass. And that's exactly what I expected to have happen. Looks pretty rough, but that's what I'm going to get. So let's close that down, and let's go ahead and do a finishing pass. We're going to use a 1 8 inch ball nose end mill for this. Again, we're going to use a selected vector. So we only want to machine inside this circle, no boundary offset. We're going to machine, because it's a circle, we're going to use the offset machining strategy, which will cut from the inside and work its way out, which I think will be quite nice. Any kind of tooling lines or tooling marks will, will actually add to the design, opposed to doing a raster, which may or may not look all that nice. And also, it may or may not mean you do a little bit more cleanup afterwards. We're not going to use, or we're going to use a, a little bit of a step over retract. So what that'll mean is that when when your tool does a circle, then it's going to move out and do the next circle. When it moves out, it's actually going to bring the tool up just a little bit, move over, and drop it back down again. That will alleviate, every so often you'll get these really strange sort of lines that radiate from the center out, um, recess the lines. Well, this will help to alleviate that. And let's just go ahead and calculate that. Let's preview that visible toolpath. I think that looks really great. We'll just change this to the material color, and that looks pretty nice in the end. If I wanted to get rid of some of this cupping that's happening around the outside here, I could go in with a smaller bit again and, and cut that, or instead of using a 1 8 inch, maybe using a 1 16th. But I think this is going to look great. If I cut it in oak, then uh, the oak that I that I have is is pretty porous, so that's really not going to matter a whole lot in the end. So that looks great. Now, we're going to go ahead and rejuggle our tooling around a bit. So let's just go ahead and reset our preview. So the first thing we want to do, like originally, was we want to do this front top edge. So let's preview that. And there it is right there. Okay, and then what we want to do is do our 3D roughing, our 3D finishing, And then we want to go ahead and do our profile cut to cut it out. And there we have. So this is the end result of the top of the box. I think that's going to look pretty nice in the end.
As you can see, it's pretty simple to go ahead and take this particular project and modify it and add a 3D element to it. This is great because maybe you've already made one of these for friends, family, maybe even for yourself, and now you want to change it up a little bit. Maybe make it for a, a different occasion, maybe an anniversary, a birthday, maybe even something to put by your bedside table just to keep your own stuff in, maybe with your own sort of unique spin on it. Anyway, I hope you liked this video, I hope you found it informative. And if you go ahead and do that, please share what you've got on social media. Anywhere, just tag us in it, and uh, we'll see it. And if we see it, of course, we'll comment on it. Anyway, thanks so much, and have fun hacking away.